Welcome back to Rank, the series where we rank every game we play for the month. Today we have 20 games, and let us start. So, first of all, we have Terra Cards. Terra Cards is a farming roguelike deck builder game. Sim, where you place cards down and grow your farm. It is most definitely one of my most favorite roguelikes I've played for this month and I've dearly enjoyed it. It is most definitely going into first place. S tier. It is a crime that it is so uncommon. And now we have a game very similar to Terra Cards. Another farming roguelike where you manage your plots or whatever like that but i feel i haven't played it as much but most i definitely feel that it's inferior when it comes to there's just the feel of their cards it doesn't meet the same feel the feel is very i don't want to say I, I didn't enjoy it as much as their cards so that's i would say our piece but it was still good though so if I were to place it, it will definitely go into B tier. Will be the B tier. Then we have another farming roguelike. The game. Now this was my first video I've ever made. It is basically a roguelike, but I don't know if you can consider it a roguelike because your days you can basically play an hour. A single run can go from an hour to an hour and a half to basically even two hours a single run so i don't even know if you can consider it a roguelike it's just of how long these runs can last it is a very big game it feels it reminds me of stardew valley stardew valley i don't know why maybe because of the design but it is really enjoyable i should make more videos on it definitely going to a tier another farming roguelike then we have drop rotations this game is in early access and there's a demo out. This is a game that I'm waiting for there to be, for the full game to be released. It is obviously another farming roguelike where there's a lot of synergies. Although in the first time I played it, it felt really easy, but there's a lot of synergies that happen in this game. Reputation is a farming themed game where you place cards and automatically, so it just feels like a Auto battler mixed with deck building mixed with card battler, but in a farming sense, in a farming genre, kind of. That's what crop rotation is about. And it's early in early access, so we'll place it in A tier, but above farming roguelike. Another farming roguelike. Then we have Stackland. Stackland is another one of these roguelikes that aren't really roguelikes but are i say they aren't really roguelikes because a single run in stacklands like you can spend hours hours on the same run on stacklands like hours that's how long it is to play in stacklands so what is stacklands basically stacklands well it's a farming well not a farming village manager roguelike where you build structures and do a lot of stuff but, but there is a game that's similar to it, and we'll come back into that and we'll explain why we don't like this. But this game is really fun though, so where would I place it? That's an interesting question. I would say, again, this is S tier. But S tier, less than cooperation, but better than farming. Some another farming roguelike. Now we have the copy. Witcher's Hand, which is basically stackland with extra steps, but with witches and much better graphics. What I don't like about it though, that one that stacklands do have, is that your villagers need food. But in Witcher's Hand, villagers don't need food, which means you can have, well, not in fun, because it's a cap how much you have to make, but you can have a lot of villagers and not worry about feeding them. This game is easier but also more difficult than stacklands it has a story to it as well 
which adds monsters every time and quests. The quest feature, I love the quest feature of this game. That's what makes it more fun than Starklands. But I don't like the fact that you, the, I don't like the fact that the villagers don't cost food. It means I can just have a bunch of villagers. It makes it easy to have a big army of villagers without any consequence. But with Starklands, there's a consequence of being your army. So, where will this be? This will be B, worse than farm keeper. Then we have Adrian Farm. Adrian Farm is an interesting one. I can't think of a game to describe it that is similar. It's basically, what is it? Plate up with farms, basically. So people place orders for so you plant your seeds. And people place orders for these seeds. So you have to kind of balance the way you play the game because you have to place fertilizers. And you have to choose which plant you want to plant because they all have their own effect. But only some people they only want certain items. So you have to play how, plan how you play it. So play it up for the farming role. Like. And this will be, I will put it in B tier. But ahead of farm keeper. So the best beekeeper. Best uh, B tier for games. So that's farming role. Like. So now we're going to go into gambling role like, that I've played. We got a ballet row, the one and only ballet row. This is easily A tier. Is that gonna say S tier? No, it is A tier. Where would I place it in A tier? We would place it the best A tier there is. What? Um, it is a poker roguelike. Where you have jokers that can do all sorts of mad things, but you have to play more of the game to unlock cool stuff i don't really like that it's like meta progression but in the bar not really meta progression because we have to play a lot of the game to unlock the cooler stuff uh, so it's in a tier then we have dungeon and degenerate gamblers this is by easily by far my most favorite game like that i've played for this month what is it it is a blackjack a roguelike that's in early access but man, is it fun. The kind of the cards that's in this game is man, the things you can do is mad. I actually love this game. This is easily S tier. The best S tier of all of them. And we have Luck being a landlord. This is the pioneer, in my opinion, to gambling roguelikes. The one that started it all. It is a slot machine roguelike uh, it is so funny like slot machines and roguelikes together in the same genre it is really fun like the synergies that's going on here is mad now the art style is a bit chaotic for a first time lookers it's like oh this what's this it's so chaotic to see what's going on here but it is definitely really fun you guys should definitely check it out and this will place an atm just ahead of crop rotation, I mean behind crop rotation, but ahead of stacklands. Now we're going to just basically all the other type of card games I've played. It, we got a Rise of Slime. Rise of Slime is such a cute roguelike deck boulder card battler with movement. And you know, it's interesting. So it is like the art style for this game is so cute. I absolutely love it. There is a feature where they have what mutations. They have a mutation feature in this game, which is fun. But I feel like it's feeling like it's lacking something. Like they should make it more complex. Maybe they're not going with complex. Maybe they're going with a simple roguelike. But this mutation feature that they have is fun. They also have a pet feature. We have pets or familiars that can do certain things. First time I played it. Uh, it does have as a pet that said immune to fire then i got another pet because you can have up to two pets and then you can upgrade have three pets and you can have four pets so then i got this second pet but it wasn't a second pet it was the same it was a different it replaced my other pet and made me immune to fire this pet deals deals damage fire damage to the enemy but also deals fire damage to me but i never knew it got rid of my other pet so i'm like oh this is amazing i have something that deals fire damage to other players but this fire damage to me. But I don't take fire damage because I have another pet 
that makes me immune to fire. But no, it replaced that pet. I don't know why or how, but it replaced it. So, where will we place this guy? We'll definitely, I think, we place it into C because I feel like it's missing something. And the mutations feel like it's not complex enough for me. So, C tier for that. Then we come back into Backpack Hero. This is the goat. The goat. It's so we'll place it into S tier. Behind Dungeon and Degenerate Gamblers. Ahead of Terracot. This is by far my most anticipated, my most game. And I was like, come on, when is it gonna release? When is it gonna release? When is it gonna release? I was just waiting for this game to release. This is Backpack Hero. Backpack Hero is a storage. It's a roguelike. Dungeon crawling storage management roguelike, which is so fun. And there's things that you can do, the synergies like there are certain artifacts that each time it moves a slot, it increases damage of adjacent weapons. Which means every time it moves a slot, the weapon next to it gains damage. Or there's other items where if this thing is next to anything in its adjacent, adjacent to it, is any other item that's adjacent to it. This item is disabled. That is such an interesting concept. Storage management, dungeon crawling, roguelike. S tier for sure. Rango. Rango goes into D. I don't like this game at all. It is an auto battler. Guard battler. Roguelike. But. When I was playing it, it felt like mm, I was leaning a lot into auto battler and more and less into a card battle. It felt like the game is just doing everything itself and it's like you can play your cards if you want to, but you also don't have to play your cards if you don't want to because you'll still win. That's what it felt like me. So definitely going into deepest. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Oh, I don't know. Then we have Dysomancer. This is a game that is in early access and the animations is amazing. Now what sets this game, it, what is it? It is a turn based card battler, deck boulder, ogre. But, now this is the thing that's interesting. There is this feature where you can change the numbers, basically glitch the numbers on anything that's on screen. But the more you do it, the more the fog catches up with you. And if it catches up with you, you die. So it's like, oh, we want to play this card, we want to die. This glitch the cards. It's basically change the number to a random number from a D6, a D20, a D100. So, that's, so you have to like kind of decide, like, am I gonna. Because you can't obviously use it all the time, this feature because then the, the thing will catch up with you the fog and then you'll die so waiting for you to come into waiting for you to finish and to be released we are definitely placing it into b tier no i can't place it in b tier it's too good let's place it into okay we place it into a tier a term above below stacklands above another family roguelike let us move another farming roguelike into top B tier. There we go. Then we have Nadir. A grim fantasy roguelike. Yes. So, what is it? It's a dead boulder roguelike. We go into the depths of hell because you've been convicted wrongly, basically. So, now this thing has an interesting feature. Each card has two features, which is interesting because you have a red feature that the card can do, or blue feature. And when you, and each the enemy has also cards, three cards, or four cards, depending. And those people's cards. Each time you play a blue card, it costs. So you need blue cards on the enemy's team to play on your team. I mean the enemy's deck. And each time you play a card that is blue card, it adds a basically a point to the blue cards on their turn. And when they the blue cards on the enemy's turn, uh, I'm I'm butchering this exclamation explanation right now. Basically, 
it's interesting because you can decide between two options of the same card and you can also make your own card so this is definitely going into B tier but where will we place it into B tier uh, we will place it B tier below Adrian above farm keeper now I should explain this to you guys since we have an enormous finish of this this is basically my first time doing a rank of black and I have no notes so I'm basically going on my memory as to how things work. So I'm probably going to be butchering a bunch of explanations here. Like with Nadir and Grim and the Zero Black. So please go easy on me. Then, now what do we have here? We have... Roots of Yggdrasil. I don't like this game at all. Because it has... Meta Progression. I don't like meta progression in games at all. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> and it leans heavily into meta progression. So we'll place it into C tier. Oh, it is a deck building roguelike for you. It also has this cool fog feature. Each time you play a card, the fog comes closer and closer to you. And then it will kill you. So you go on missions. There's meta progression. So, this is how it works. You go on missions to get resources. In these re in this missions, you have a certain number of cards you can play until the fog comes. And then once the fog comes, each time you place an another card, the fog reaches closer. And when the fog consumes you, you die. And then, but. So you don't get the resources you needed for from the mission. So it's a mission roguelike. Deck builder. Village management with meta progression. I really love the fog feature. And like the timer. It adds a suspense. But I hate meta progression. So we'll place it into B tier, the lowest of a B. Now we have Crash the core. This is a really fun roguelike. So, it is a roguelike where you uncover conspiracies to take over the galaxy. So, what makes this interesting? Well, it's a deck builder, card battle roguelike. But, there's a few things that make it interesting. You have the ability to place down summons. So, you can place down gadgets you can place some gadgets on the field and these gadgets have certain effects it's like a tower in most other games but not only that you also have summons you can kind of like summon an enemy on the board or a partner a familiar on the board so you have gadget summons and you also have familiar summons which make it interesting but not only that you also have farming i'm not farming fishing you can go fishing Fish up cards. You can choose between two cards. Most of them are healing cards. Oh yes, the healing. You can also go to a tavern. Now the tavern there's three options, which I know. Yeah, there's three options. It's the cheapest option. It gives you from zero HP to full HP. Then you have one that gives you from 50 to I think 75. Then you have one that gives that heals you full. And you obviously you always take the cheapest one. But there's a chance to give you 0 HP We need to full HP Now I'm going so deep into this dumb feature But I love Randomness in games I love it But So where will we place it? We will place this game Okay we will place it into Okay let's see I say we move this to C tier But the best C tier you, Roots of Ye Crystal Would be the best C tier game then we'll move this guy down uh witch's hand make it the second best above rise of slime below the roots of Yggdrasil. so that's what it's looking like then we can move this guy below adrian bar farm above nadia and guy now we have e Hingshin, a cultivation roguelike made by gamma games this is most definitely my favorite 
the uh, publishers. They made Shogun King. They made Rango. They made Ancient uh, Cultivation. Like they also made Amazing Cultivation Simulator. These guys, this Gamma Games, made big, published good, good games. So let us get into Ancient. What is it? This is an interesting game. It is an auto battler online roguelike deck builder card battler which makes for interesting things so what makes it interesting because it gets really complex like the way the thing plays things are get complex like really complex in this game like i was playing the other day and so basically here uh, oh it's so complicated i don't know how to explain it yeah. But it's also really fun. It is an online game as well, and I think it is free on Steam. Yeah, it is definitely free on Steam. This guy will be placed into. I want to put it into A tier, but I don't believe it belongs into A tier. I say we move it into B tier, highest B tier. Roman horse. This is not technically a roguelike. Uh, yeah, it's technically not a red flag. So what is it? It is... So there's missions. So this is the... Village management. Deck builder. Card bachelor. That has missions. It doesn't have any endless mode. But it's still really fun. Which, so what makes it really fun? I just, I don't know, I just love village sim type of games, which you can, you can even see that I played Terra cards, I played Stacklands, I played Witch Hand, I played another farm, I played Farm Keeper, I played Adrian Farm, Mark, Adrian Farm, I mean, so I played a lot of the, I like this type of games, so, but the third mission, apps, no, is it, no, the fourth mission, the fourth mission sucks so much, so I want to put it into DHA. Just for that mission. That mission sucks so much. I hate it. But it's also a really good game. So. We'll place it. Uh, it's. Most people. I don't think a lot of people would like it. Because it's. Might feel like. The animation is kind of bad. The art is kind of bad. Most people won't like this game. But I love it. And I don't care. What y'all guys think. We are placing it into A tier. The worst of A tier, but still into A tier. Now we have Die in the Dungeon. This is an early access game that's coming out in 2024. It's a demo. I've been playing the demo and I am hooked on this game. Absolutely hooked. Absolutely love this game. We, I want to place it into S tier. So what is it? It is a deck boulder, but it uses die, so it's a die boulder. Card battler, but not cards, doesn't use cards, it uses die. So it's a die boulder, die battler, dungeon crawling, roguelike. Now, what makes it fun is. What makes it fun? What makes it fun? I don't know how to describe what makes it fun. I just enjoy it. I can't like, describe to you why it's fun. fun. We'll place it into S tier as well. We'll place it into... Third S tier? No, second S tier. Yes, place like this. And then... Yeah, and this is the thing. We have... Dungeon Degenerate Gamblers. Best, best game. Die in the Dungeon. Backpack Hero, Terra Cards, then uh, Roman Horse. We have Ballad Row, Crop Rotation, then Luck Be a Lander, then Stack Lands, then Dysomancer. No, no, no. Dyson, let's move this guy back here. Dysomancer is better than Luck Be a Lander. Then we have Yingxin, another farming roguelike. Move this guy forward. Move this guy like this. Then Adrian Farm, then Crash the Core. No, no, no. Bring Crash the Core down here. Like this. Then Nerder, then Farmkeeper, then Roots of Vigors too. Uh uh, we need to move this guy down as well. Rise of Slime. So, this is how it looks in the web. 
Point S, Point A, Point B, 3 and C, 2 and D. I will probably go in more detail in another video on why these two are so bad. But which is like, we need to have another like SS. SS is... The, uh, they, these are all SS. Okay, this guy next. We can move this guy down. Roman horse can be moved down. Like this. Higher than Black Bear Landlord. Lower than Dyson Manson. So, anyway, guys, this was my rant. Oh, glutz. I have no notes here, so I'm just going off what I remember. And so, obviously, I'm butchering stuff like Nadir. I just butchered the explanation. Next time. I do these things as I play the game, I'll be writing notes so it's more precise, more easily for you guys to understand why I enjoy these games. And see you guys in the next one. Next video, we'll be talking about Stefflands and which hunt. We'll be comparing those two. These games are really similar. We'll be comparing Terra Cards and Farm Keeper because these guys are really fun. And then we'll be doing. This will be such a bad comparison. But we'll be comparing the two. Gambling roguelikes. Palatro, Dungeon, and Degenerate Gamblers. Palatro is much more famous, but I enjoy Dungeon and Degenerate Gamblers more. Now, is Palatro better than Dungeon and Degenerate Gamblers, DDG? Yes, I do feel it is, but I still enjoy it most. So, those are two comparisons. We have three comparisons, and then, yeah, that's it. See you guys in the next one.